Nikki Lee, Tim and Joel on Nova. Hey, Jermaine, we're so proud of you because you got to speak to the one and only Take That. Your favourites ever in the whole Sorry. world. Turn my mic on. Well, turn your mic on too, Joel. Come on, what's happening? I am Why on. I was what's waiting ever? to give Jermaine his accolades. Quick, go, give him his accolades, go. It's going to be a ripper interview, Jermaine. I cannot wait to listen to it. Thank you. I'm so excited. Can I tell you, Jermaine, after you did your interview with Take That, yes. I had a little moment with Gary, <gasps> your favourite, and he told me how much of, he loved doing the interview with you, how proud of you he is, oh. and he said it was one of the greatest interviews he's done. And then I no saw way. Gary straight after that, and he said, what I just told Ricky was a big fat lie. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome our next co-pilots to the cockpit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Take That. You're listening to the Jermaine Plane on Nova. Oh, Kaz. Hang on a minute. Who's got his own show? (laughs) Me, buddy. Who's got his own show? Great, mate. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. Jermaine, Jermaine, nice to meet you. (laughs) Welcome. Here. In front of me, I've got the one and only Gary Barlow, Howard Donald, Mark Owen. Take that. How are we, guys? Hey. Okay, guys, just give me two seconds. I just need to do my quick freak out. Two seconds. Oh my god, I'm interviewing Take That! I can't believe it! Okay, <laughs> okay, sorry. I just need to get that out first because uh, you guys understand I'm a massive, massive, massive fan. Oh, so thank you so Jimmy. much and it's a pleasure thank you. to have you guys here. I mean, how's Australia going so far? Awesome. We've only been yeah. here a few days, mm-hmm. but uh, we did a show in Perth yep. um, and now we're really happy to have landed in Sydney. We're off to Adelaide tomorrow, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Um, but we're here for two weeks. I mean, okay. that's that's amazing. We're, 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 and we've timed it well, the sun's out. Tell me about your This Life tour. Um, there's quite a concept behind it, which I really enjoy, like these infomercials. And tell me about that. How did, how did that concept come about? I mean, we love putting our shows together. If you've ever seen our shows in the past, yeah. you know, a lot of the time, it's when we're writing the record, we start to think about what we can do. And we've done some amazing shows in the past. But I think that for us on this record, we... With the record especially, we felt like we were sort of giving a slightly different impression of ourselves and, and it was a little bit more uh, intimate in, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. some ways. Um, and and I, it just felt like a really nice... Been able to play with the song, This Life, which I think when I played it to my wife the first time, she said, oh, it sounds quite 70, like, uh, like a TV show. Okay, I was yeah. like... <laughs> We'll have that. Love uh, that. So it was actually my wife who inspired it. But yeah, we did, just going down that colour and trying to give a different uh, aesthetic to yeah. what we're doing was is always great fun. Yeah, us. wonderful. That sounds uh, amazing. The guy who directed those infomercials that you saw actually also directed our Back for Good video. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From back in the day. So yes. that it was really nice to connect with him again um, and to be able to do something like that. And we did do two days of shooting. And as you know, Jermaine, in today's modern world, everybody goes like, we need content. Absolutely. So we, we, we were like, well, we'll give content. We'll make that. And we wanted the whole experience when people came to the show for it to start straight away. As soon as mm-hmm. they walked in, we could like make it this world that they could <laughs> yeah. be a part of. I um, loved it. It was really good fun. It's really such, good fun. It's such a great concept. And look, I've got you guys on the show uh, as co-pilots here on the Jermaine Plane. So uh, soon I'm going to ask you guys to really take over the show and to play your favourite Take That throwbacks of all time. So okay. have a think about that. Uh, but first, it's been 30 years since your album Everything Changes, Mm -hmm. which is my favourite throwback, Take That Album. I mean, so many good songs. Like, we've got, obviously, Everything Changes, Why Can't I Wake Up With You, one of my faves. My most favourite is Another Crack In My Heart, a good little little deep cut. Uh, Babe, Pray, all those types of things. Um, Let's take you back to that year, to 1993. Mm -hmm. Um, What was going on there? Because the first album, Take That and Party, was a real party, dance, club, underground kind of vibe. And then we moved into this new new Jack Swing kind of vibe. Yeah. Tell me me about how that process happened, how that change happened. 
It was a really interesting decade, the 90s, and it's it's interesting to hear people talk about it, but also to have lived through it, because it it's not necessarily the way people remember it. When we were first signed as a band, it was a very unfashionable thing to sign a band with an image like us, because at the time it was a lot of faceless dance music acts that you wouldn't even know what they looked like, but they had these hit records with dance music. Yep. So we sort of tried to, to do a mind meld of them both, <laughs> where we had an image and we had this sort of... Our manager always had a bit of a dance influence, so he was always encouraging us to try and make dance music to um, to make it part of our performance and our show at that point. Um, but, of course, from America, which is where most of us are mm -hmm. um, influenced, came, was coming this new pop sound, um, which was people like Boys to Men and Babyface and, and this swingy mid-tempo sort of cross-Atlantic music was hitting the airwaves okay. and we jumped on the back of that with Prey and a, an amazing British producer called Steve Gervier he wanted to be the British version of New Jack Swing okay. and so we were sort of riding a bit on his coattails but we had these pop songs that he was pairing with this sound and it was working great and yep. people were enjoying it and we were having you know with the songs like Prey we were like four weeks at number one with that song wow I think so, so it, it was yeah. a real time where we were finding our sound after our first record but music was changing at the same time so re really very influential for a very influential time in the 90s absolutely it's one of my favorite songs and one of my favorite videos too i mean we've got it on the screen here um yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of posing a lot of fun stuff on the beach where was this taken it was in, um, where was it in Acapulco? Acapulco, yeah. Okay. Which um, looks Mexico. more glamorous than what it actually is. Oh, well, right, what okay. it was when we was there. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was um, great when we got told we're, good, we're doing the video in Acapulco. But when we got there, it wasn't as great was, as it looked. It, it, what was was it the weather or what was? I what think they told. It? I think one of the first things they told us was um, be, beware of the sea lice <laughs> okay. when you go in the sea. <laughs> okay, Wherever right. they were, I don't know. <laughs> Did you not catch any of those? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Do, yeah. do you know? Do you know? The, the, making this video as well was really um, for us it was a step up from where we'd been before we started to work with this uh, new director who shot a few of our Greg Mazurak yeah. mm -hmm. and he started to shoot a few of our music videos and it felt like the whole take that thing was taking a step up producer wise mm -hmm. music wise we were growing up you know yeah. we were we were people you know, in ourselves, our characters were starting to come through. We were starting to learn about who we were, you know, a little bit more. And we were able to sort of put that in. Prey and that time was a real, for me, it was a magical time for Take That, where, where the, us as people and the music gelled together in a way that we could really perform yep. and and embrace it was like a glow up stage right it, it was our everything. glow up stage yeah. <laughs> and, and also with the mu with the music came our shows were getting bigger so mm -hmm. we had more money to spend on the shows and so like mark said the music was progressing but so was the live performance and yeah. so was the visuals love that all at the same time brilliant and i i do love there was a performance i saw you guys do where it's all very church religious with the robes and the stained glass and oh, yeah. everything like that true up true glow up indeed um i'm gonna get on one of your other songs from everything changes really like my fire because um this is another video of mine that I, <laughs> that I really enjoy. Um, let's talk about the fashion here for a, <laughs> for a bit, if that's all right. That Johnson's baby shirt. Yeah. How did that come about? The crop top. The the official beginning of crop top. Yes. Um, have we cut that on the day? It never came like that. That was uh, <laughs> a fashion move. Um, do you know, it was, uh, I think... For us, we were really excited because we shot this video at the Ministry of Sound. Oh, wow. Okay. In London. And that for us was like the club. Yeah, so we gotcha. got to go there on the day. And, and, and as a band, we never really got to go out at this time because we were busy and we were traveling places. So if somebody said you had a day at the Ministry of Sound, we were like, yes, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Fabulous. I love that. Oh, good. Well, okay. Well, that's Everything Changes. And um, it's amazing that it's been 30 years. I mean, how do you guys feel? 
that an iconic album like that has reached 30 years. I mean, for me, like, you know, I was very young when that album came out, but mm-hmm. you can see that it kind of crosses so many generations and things like that. How does that feel? It's amazing. I mean, we, we, we for the very first time on the tour that we've just done in Europe, we did, um, we celebrated the album uh, in Malta. Mm-hmm. We did like a take that weekend, uh, and for the very first time ever, we did the whole album of uh, Everything Changes. Oh, fabulous. So we rehearsed that and we did every song in song order or what it was on the album. And that was a fantastic experience and it was great for the audience as well. Were there any songs you guys performed for the first time? You would have really liked it because we did another Clock in My Heart. Oh, really? We did. 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 You would have been very happy. It It sounds... There was about six we hadn't done before. Okay, right. Ever. Live. So it was fun for us as well. Yeah, brilliant. Another Crack in My Heart. uh, There's a sample in... It sounds like you sampled a bit of Michael Jackson in that song. That's right. If you listen to it again. Mm, uh, Human Nature. That's right, yeah. So that's why I kind of like it. It's in... interesting that when you rewind to it to a year like that of how much everybody was influencing each other mm-hmm. and not yeah. scared to take pieces of each other's music as well yeah um it was a, it was a really good i think it was a good time for music that was definitely pop music absolutely well everything changes 30 years that's amazing let's get into the co-pilot p- bit of the chat if that's all right you guys get to take over and um you get to play your favorite take that throwbacks of all time i think i might start first if that's okay so i'm just going to get on my favorite one this one's a bit left of field um it's a song called girl now <laughs> i know this one here is a bit of an unreleased one but i love the dance and the performance. Was this at the Hitman and Her show? Is that where it was? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What, was, was. was the fa- what happened to the fate of that song? Because that's one thing. I know a lot of fans would like to see that song get released. Well, or- you, know, you know what? The, you, so if, you, if I just go back to, to that era, we're coming into the 90s, we've had this five-year reign of Stock Aitken and Waterman in the 80s, okay. where, where, where they were at like 30 number ones or something. Um, and at that point, that's what I was listening to. That that was I wanted to make pop music. So be- between that and I can't actually remember what American stuff was coming around at that time, but very would much have, would 88, have been 89. So you Tiffany. had Kylie, you had Jason, yeah. Donovan, and you had and Madonna Tiffany, as well. Madonna. She, she was do- doing like Vogue and stuff right around that time, and and so you know pop music's really heightened, really poppy, fast. Um, and and so songs like that, Girl, were a result of what I was listening to and what I thought was the sound of the charts. But of course, the charts had moved on by this point. So right. when, when we were playing that song to labels, they were saying, well, we get the band, sort of, but the music's dated. Right. So we never ended up recording any of those songs. But we did them at shows, didn't we, those yeah. Sh- songs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see a new performance that, of that. I think that That'd might cool. have been like the song that we performed the first time on TV wasn't it I think mm-hmm. Girl was so yeah. that was very early on yeah that was Jason's we were just, it was, we were just so excited to be on the telly yeah you know um, <laughs> back then you know it was just like oh my god we're on the TV Amazing. and you could press record at home you could record yourself <laughs> on a real throwback there a real throwback, a real throwback. there throwback. we go here Threw on the Jermaine plane there we yeah. go flying back in time Howard uh, may, let's start with you as co-pilot um, obviously you've done DJing you know what a crowd can respond to really well mm-hmm. what would be your ultimate take that throwback of all time uh, I'm going to say Why Can't I Wake Up With You the um, Jervier Brothers um, remix okay. on, on Everything Changes yeah uh, just simple because of the memories because of its funkiness and um, I guess the memory from the um, video that was shot which was in a French chateau mm-hmm. it was just the whole thing was like a great memory for me I'm performing it and dancing to it as well I love that okay well let's get that on the Jermaine plane right now why can't I wake up with you why can't I wake so up with Mark, let's go with you when it comes to your ultimate take that throwback. What's your favourite? How, how how not throwback can we go? Can we do little throws or have they got big, really big throws? Let's go. Oh no, it's it's your band. Go for okay. go for whichever I'm throwback go, you want. I'm going to go to progress. Okay. If, I, if that's okay. So sure. it's, a, it's like a medium throw mm-hmm. um, to the flood, uh, okay. which for me was just such a 
beautiful moment for us as a band to get back in the studio uh, as the five of us. We went to Electric Lady Studios in New York, um, which was Jimi Hendrix's studio. We all turned up in New York City and we, we started making a new record. Um, and it was just the most exciting time. And that song for me was... It was the first time the f we had been together creatively as a band and, and writing together and performing together as a five on our own, in our own way, just left there to do it. And it was really, really exciting. And, and the energy, you could almost, mm -hmm. you know, taste it. Mm -hmm. I would play drums on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it was it a challenging experience doing no, the drums? Well, it, was e it was an easy. It was for you. <laughs> no, it was an easy. It's, really? an easy, it's an easy pattern. So it was. Um, that's why I played it. Yeah, I wasn't getting too complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's a very genius song, and let's get it on right now here on the Jermaine Plane. All right, Gary. So you're the songwriter. You've uh, you've created all these amazing songs for the band, and uh, it will be great to know what your ultimate take that throwback is. So go ahead. I'm going to go slightly off the beaten path too, okay. and I'm going to say this particular song because there's been many songs which have been really important for us in our sort of milestone 34 year career, um, but I believe that one song that made people just double take a little bit on us was a song called A Million Love Songs. And mm -hmm. and no one expected it from this band that do dance routines, that wear the leather clothes, boy band, five faces. No one expected that song to come. And it was at a time where people were like, they're just a boy band, whatever. And when this song went on the radio, it actually spent about, eight weeks in the top ten, it kept going up and down, six, seven, back to five, back to six, back up to four, but it moved around a lot because people were playing it not realising who it was. Um, and I believe it was a really important song for us. And, of course, nowadays we play it at a concert and it's like a standard. Now it's one, Absolutely. a song you can't leave out, really. Is it Mike Stevens? Is that your... Is that your saxophone? You know what? Bizarrely not. Okay. It, Mike, is our, um, he's been our musical director since 1993, but yeah. actually the guy that played on that record was a guy called Snake Davis. Okay. And he was just a session player. He mm -hmm. was brought in because my demo had a keyboard sax on it. And mm -hmm. I always dreamed of a real one, but I, I didn't know anyone who played sax. So when the producer produced the song, I said, can we have a real sax? And he was like, I know the, I know the guy, Snake Davis. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And refresh my memory, was this also one of the first demos you ever made that that got you kind of that spot as songwriter for the band? Well, you know what? It was on my... the When I first met our manager, Nigel, in 1990... I took in a cassette and it had four songs on it and Million Love Songs was one of the songs. And um, and it and it when he heard it, it he kept going, What about what about a million love songs? Well it, he'd he'd say, you know, what have you recorded this week? Well what about a million love songs? He kept coming back to that song. Um, and I don't think the label ever really saw it as a single for us. Mm -hmm. And so when the time was right, he pushed it as we need to, to go with that one next. Mm -hmm. And he was right, because it, it was a big record for us. Brilliant. Well, let's get that on right now, flying back in time here on the Jermaine Plain. A Million Love Songs by Take That. A million love songs are made up And here I am trying to tell you That I can Thank you guys so much for being co-pilot on the show. I'm not going to lie, my heart is racing. This oh. has been the most nerve-wracking experience, but I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, before I let you guys go, here at the Jermaine Plain, we fly back in time across genres, across decades, across countries, across cities. 
Um, from each of you, what's the one thing that you'd want the world to know about Take That? Let's start with you, Mark. Oh, good question. Um, I think that for me, uh, live shows, uh, the thing that is always, um, I know that we we take a lot of pride in the shows that we've put together. And so I think that, and I'm still, whenever we go on stage, I'm always really proud of the shows that we do. So I, I think that that is an important, um, that's a, a thing that I'd like us to be remembered for is doing these big live shows. Okay, cool. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Howard. Oh, God, he's got me because he's just nicked my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'd like everyone to know that since the year um, 2006, we all decided to write all the stuff together. So we all share the writing and we all love getting in the studio and writing together as a band. Fabulous. Thank you very much. And Gary, what's the one thing you want the world to know about Take That? Well, we've been together for a, for a long time. And I believe that when anything lasts many years, there's usually a good reason for it. And I think it's because we love this band. We really do. And we love every piece of it. The writing the music, the making the music, the performing the music, and also that beautiful audience that have followed us for years and years. This is the take that world that we love. And it's the reason that we're still here. We're still friends. We're still colleagues. We're still ambitious. We're still trying to make things better every year. Um, and the reason for that is that this world is, it's a great place to be and we love it. Thank you very much, Take That, for joining me as co-pilot on the show. Uh, this life world tour around Australia right now, and uh, everything changes turning 30 years. Thank you so much for your thank time. You, oh, thank you, man. And congratulations. Thank you so oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. This is the Jermaine Fane on Nova Throwbacks.